My microwave has been doing well since I repaired it a few months back and made a video about it. But then it was blown again. The fuse blew. So I've taken the cover off, security fittings, and right now I've got a bulb power limiter in series with it. I probably don't have enough bulbs to run the thing, but it didn't even get that far. I got a couple hundred watts of bulbs in there, but I don't even have to run it. All I have to do is stop it, eject the door, bam, it's presenting a short across the line. And that's what it was doing before when I had bypassed that one switch. Then I bought the switch, put it in, and everything was fine. So it seems that that switch I put in failed. Maybe it was inferior quality. It was uh, very cheap. I did buy a second switch at the same time. My switch had three legs, and the stock switch had two legs. A single ball double throw instead of a single pole single throw. So I bought a single pole single throw that took a while to get here. And I paid a lot more for it. Or maybe it's a better quality switch. I'll try putting that one in. If I can find it. That was a, long, a while ago. I'm also going to try to diagram the wiring of the switches. Uh, someone requested that a while back. I couldn't just stop and do it. I was too busy. But I'll try to cover that now too. At least get some photographs in there. So you know it sees power because the uh, load is gone from the light bulbs. As soon as I open the door, it presents a short across the line. Which is basically what it was doing when I tried bypassing that one switch. It's got three switches on the interlock, and there's two different tines that they're geared to. They look like they're the same. It's all a matter of timing with these switches and how they're set up. That's why I bought that single pull single throw along with that single pull double throw bag of switches I bought. Because I was afraid the timing would be a little bit different on the uh, single throw than it might be on the double throw. You never know. So there's two hooks. And they go into banks of switches roughly where these two fingers are. Lining up with those two hooks. I can see one switch, the one I replaced, sticking out here. I'll change the camera angle in a sec. But just know that these two hooks are both the same length. There's no timing trick there. I'll leave, leave it open actually because it might be easier to get the mechanism apart if I remember right. So the switch that's mounted at an angle and has one red side is the side is the switch I put in. There's also a switch up here. So this switch works on this Yeah, interesting. So the one switch is geared to the here, the open switch. The other two are geared to these two tabs. And that's the context for one switch, there's the context for the other switch. It took a little digging, but I finally found my switches that I bought a few months ago. This is the one I bought a whole bag of these at a pretty good price. This one I bought single. It's missing the other terminal. I paid almost as much for this one switch as I did for that whole bag of the other ones. I ended up not using this because it came late. I just jammed one of these in, which is down there. But apparently that's what failed. I'll find out for sure in a moment. But this switch is the one I bought special, you know, just because it's missing that terminal basically. But it seemed to work just fine with this one until recently. So this is the wiring diagram as near as I can get it for the switches here. Um, at least enough for that one guy who wrote me and wanted to... He pulled all the switches out at once and couldn't figure out how to put the wires back on. So if someone did that, it's probably too late for him, but here it is. So on these switches, note that there's a normally open not used on the switch. And it's not even populated on the switch itself. There won't be even be a terminal there. And um, same as this one here. So it's just the opposite switch. Missing the one terminal, this one's missing the other terminal. I think they do that for safety reasons, just to keep exposure down to conductors, you know, something they don't have to cover or anything else. Colors may vary, who knows. This is the board, PC board. The main power connection's on the relay. The relay sticking out of the board and there's power connection at the end of it there. Um, and then there's a couple of little connectors on the board. And as far as the switches go, they're pretty simple, you know, this one just goes to a green and a blue. Blue on the common. And, and actually, you could reverse these, it wouldn't matter. 
same with this you know you could reverse these two legs and I, I mean i wouldn't just to screw, not screw yourself up but basically they're two-legged devices all three of them so you could switch the wires on them and they'd be okay i don't need one switch There it goes. So you can see the switch is not really clicking right. Sometimes it doesn't re-click, unclick. Yep, very definite on or off. No in between. No tricking it. So basically there's this one tine here that sticks up and locks the switch in. If you pull that back with one finger just a little bit, don't go ape on it, don't want to break it. And then ease the switch out with the other two fingers, you can pull the whole thing out. And then getting it back in is just kind of the reverse. You have to get the door open when you're pushing it in there, otherwise that might stop you. You can kind of wiggle it in until you feel it just right. So door open, push it in, kind of wiggle and seat it down. And you'll hear it click in when it, this tine is just right, it'll click. I don't know if it picks up on camera, but if you look at the uh, old switch compared to the new switch, or unused unused switch for the same batch basically, you'll notice this decolor discolored quite a bit. Both these contacts got quite hot, even the one that wasn't being used. But yeah, they're way discolored, and none of the other switches in the batch look like that. None of these are discolored; they're all bright. Clicking action is really. See there, it didn't unclick. Inside, look at the switch. You can see that one contact's kind of burned up. This is what I could figure out from tracing wires and such. Um, almost guaranteed not to be completely accurate. I did try to figure out the switches. Stop switch in the bottom seems to have just soft contacts, just a blue and green wire going to it. And the green goes to ground. So it just grounds the blue wire. So that's just some kind of sensor for the board. The board also has, this, this is the main board, it also has this other connector, the red, black, uh, red, blue, and gray. Blue goes up to here. Anyway, the gist of it seems to be interlocked, so to speak, is this white wire, and by extension this black wire, that puts these two relays together. So this has to be energized with uh, 120 volts in order to run the transformer, because this goes to the transformer. And the other leg of the transformer goes to neutral. There's actually a couple wires on it, but they're neutral based. So like I said, the gist of it is, this white wire, is that with the door closed, this white wire is hooked to the 120 volt AC line. Pretty much directly 120 volt AC on these conductors. But when the door is open, these wires both become neutral. They get switched over to the neutral. These two switches, you're either hooked to the red or you're hooked to the black, depending on how the door goes in all these conditions. So I guess the thought is, and it worked of course, they don't want the thing to run. They don't want you to open the door and have the thing still running basically. That's the worst thing. So to guard against that, they make it switch to neutral when the door is open. So both switches have to be right for it to work. Otherwise you get a short and you blow the fuse in the main line. So the main line comes in. Neutral, ground, hot, a fuse board, which has got a filter on it, a capacitor and an inductor. And then uh, the red wires go to here, split off to this other connector on the board. The thing that's confusing is this red wire here and the relay, white and red wire on the relay, this red wire is not the same as these red wires. These red wires are always 120 volt, where this is a switch thing and it goes right to the transformer. And like I said, the other side of the transformer goes to neutral. Neutral wires, I didn't draw here. I let them floating, but they're gray.
And finally, I've got it back on the bulb tester to make sure I can open the door without it shorting out the cord. Lighting up the bulb, which it does no longer do. I don't quite have enough bulbs there to actually run the microwave, so I'm not even going to try. But it looks like it's all fixed. And the fuse that keeps blowing when the switch gets out of whack is this guy right here. And I've run out of 15 amp fuses at this point, so I've got a 20 amp slow in there. I'm going to order right now some ceramic bodied fuses. She want over the glass ones because they won't shatter under big heat like that. So I'm going to get some ceramic 15 amp slow if I can get them slow. Or medium delay maybe. But that's the final thing I have to come back for and do. So I'm just going to put it together for now and uh, take it apart in a few days when I get the fuse. Just make sure I don't bury it on the counter.